Hello, my dear Franken friends, and welcome to Spook You, your one stop shop for all things ghastly and ghoulish. I'm your host, Barnabas Vixen. How horrible of you to join us! Curl up, invite your friends, and by all means, make sure those lights are out. That way it's harder to tell what may or may not be lurking around you. There's nothing like a good mystery, am I right? Tonight we'll feature a singular tale of devilish design curated by those wicked weavers of woe. And without further ado, allow me to pass the reins on over to our vivacious voiceover virtuoso Trey Falco for tonight's sinister story. Please keep all limbs and side covers at all times. We wouldn't want anything to go missing now, would we? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Parker! The living room of the Charles household hadn't been as tense since I had to tell Dad I accidentally lost his leopard gecko in the backyard. That was seven years previous. I sat on the couch, arms pulled in tight to my chest. Pop, who had explained everything to first, sat across from me in the recliner. Silent. He was mad, but he was never really one to yell. Melissa had walked home shortly after he'd arrived. It was a painfully quiet half hour before Dad joined the rest of the family at home. Go ahead, Parker, he'd said once Dad arrived. Tell Dad about your big adventure with your friends. So I did. I could tell, watching him pace back and forth, that Dad had mixed feelings. He was happy I was home safe, but infuriated that I'd been such an idiot to begin with. I knew he was trying to stay calm, but it looked like he was having a difficult time. So... Dad stopped in front of the TV. Why exactly did you want to break into Mrs. Hudson's garage in the first place? I thought this was obvious, but whatever. It had a big chain on it. Who puts a chain on their garage? My voice cracked as I said it, realizing that it was, in fact, kind of a stupid reason to want to burglarize someone. I scrambled for justification where, deep in the pit of my stomach, I knew there was none. Plus, the other kids at school said they thought she might be in, like, a cult or something. Oh my god! A cult? Dad's eyebrows looked like they were about to jump right off his face. Even if that weren't completely ridiculous, why would that make you want to... to... He stammered his way through the end of the sentence. In his defense, it was kind of a stupid accusation. Mrs. Hudson spent most of her time doing harmless old white lady stuff, going to church, volunteering at the local homeless shelter, and getting rowdy on bingo nights. I couldn't stand having either of them mad at me. As far as parents went, I was one of the luckiest kids I knew. I took a chance to try and win them back over. Well, if it makes you feel any better, my leg bounced, threatening to bounce me right off the couch. I was the one who tried to call it off. I knew it was stupid. Dad sighed. He stood a moment longer, rubbing his face with both hands. The silence was suffocating. Finally, he sat next to me. He put his arm around my shoulders and then kissed the top of my head. I could tell he was still angry, but thankful I'd shown some hint of sense. It was still incredibly stupid, Parker. <laughs> I know. Being the one who tried to call it off seemed to win me some favor over with my parents, but I was grounded for the next month. The first exception was school, and the second exception was the search party. The searching started early the next morning. I headed out with my parents and Melissa came to join us. Dad smiled to greet her. Are your parents coming too, Melissa? Pop not so subtly elbowed Dad for his comment and I caught him hissing, David, under his breath. I wondered when the last time Melissa's parents came to anything was. Both were officers, so you'd expect to see them at something like this, working, if not volunteering. They got the day off. She looked down at the ground, rearranging dust with the tip of her boot. It would have been fun if it wasn't terrifying. 
It's not often you see the whole town together, but the circumstances were grim. A cop I've never met barked orders at us, and we were split into groups to canvas different areas of the town and the surrounding forest. Melissa, my dads, and the Carey family from across the street started our search near the wood's edge. Did you see Mrs. Hudson's house? Melissa whispered to me when the others weren't looking in our direction. What? N no. I think the cops went to talk to her this morning. I saw a cruiser outside. I didn't know what to say, so I didn't say anything. We spent three hours combing the forest. Melissa and I tried to stay together with my parents, but the Carey family wanted to branch off. I didn't have any issues with that. My stomach was in knots. It wasn't my fault, but I'd be lying if I said I believed that. I wasn't particularly close with the Careys, and I didn't need them watching me try to grapple with my guilt. I hadn't noticed from the bedroom, but it must have rained the previous night. Wherever we walked, the ground was muddy and gave way to our footsteps. After half an hour, my black converse were stained brown from mud, decorated with bits of leaves and discarded pine nettles. If it weren't for the wet socks, though, I don't think I would have noticed. We were all too focused on the search. In need of a break, mentally and physically, I looked around for somewhere to sit. Hey, Melissa! I gestured to a nearby fallen tree. We took a seat. My parents didn't want to go too far without us, so they just kept looking in our immediate area. I feel like it's my fault he's missing. Melissa thought my comment over. I don't think it's your fault, or my fault. She was taking her time, choosing her words carefully. We don't even know if Damien disappearing has anything to do with, you know, us trying to break in. As she said it, I wanted to say we definitely know that, but I knew she was right. It could just be a coincidence, though that didn't really make me feel any better. A wave of guilt washed over me. Was I really sitting here, taking a break and feeling sorry for myself? If I'm going to blame myself for Damien's disappearance, then at the very least I should be committed to helping find him. I stood up abruptly and Melissa was quick to follow. We exited the trees into a small clearing. Even after the rain, it was beautiful. There were little blue wildflowers sprouting out of the ground all across the pale green expanse. A section of creek ran through it lined with broad gray rocks. I'd been there before, but not in the last few years. I started absentmindedly following along the muddy edge of the creek. It seemed as good a place as any to look. Melissa followed, but seemed reserved. Parker, your parents are still back there. She gestured her head towards the wooded area. Her tone was measured, but she looked concerned. I'm not going to go too far. It was true. I didn't want to put anyone through any more stress than I had already. I just want... And that's when I saw him. About 20 meters down the creek, sitting on a rock with his duffel bag by his side. I saw a silhouette that was unmistakably his. Oh, would you please calm down? We haven't even gotten to the maiming yet. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, sorry about that, dear listeners. <clears throat> is it is it time for a sponsor break already? Well, uh, well, you're in luck because I've got the perfect one in mind. Tell me, friends, are you tired of those tenacious teenagers running amok in your neighborhood, vandalizing your hard-earned property? How about that one guy who always insists on mowing his lawn at 7.30 on a Saturday morning? Have you tried everything? No, I mean everything. And they keep on coming back. Well, it sounds like it's time for you to call the Scream Team. Voorhees, Kruger, and Associates, Killers at Large. Specializing in pest control, extermination, and dreamwalking, they will ensure your neighborhood is peaceful, tranquil, and free of any unwanted pests. Guaranteed! Efficiency is the core of everything they do at Voorhees, Kruger, and Associates. With their patented five-step killing method, you can rest assured knowing that the job you want done will be handled quickly, quietly, and without too much mess. With several different plans to choose from, including dismemberment, Dismemberment, disembowelment, dream stalking, and more, no two jobs will ever be done the same way. As they say, variety is the spice of life. Looking for something a little more custom suited to your problem? Then choose other when selecting your preferred method of extermination and let your creativity run wild. 
They also offer pest deterrence and relocation packages, but come on. You wouldn't be calling them if that's how you wanted to handle this situation. <laughs> Let's be honest. Be sure to use coupon code KILLERSAVINGS, all one word, at checkout to get half off your first extermination. The best part about this deal is that you get to choose which half to keep. The top half or the bottom half, or the left or right if you're into that kind of thing. That's Killer Savings at checkout to get half off your first extermination. Voorhees Kruger and Associates, Killers at Large. Why call the rest when you can call the best? Now, uh, <clears throat> I've uh, got to get back to, uh, to what I was doing before you rudely interrupted me. Now be gone! You've got a story to finish. Now where were we? <laughs> Holy shit! Damien! Melissa and my parents left my mind in an instant as I took off towards Damien. They'll catch up. This is more important. My damp shoes sank deeper into the sludge with every step, but I didn't let it slow me down. A few meters from Damien, I slowed to a jog, overwhelmed with joy, to the point where I struggled to speak coherently. A smile spread across my face. Where the fuck? What the fuck have you been doing? I I've... We've all been looking... The word caught in my throat as I slowed to a stop. Now only a few feet away. The smile faded from my face when it occurred to me that he hadn't responded to a single word that I'd said. He wasn't talking. He wasn't moving. Oh God. I felt like someone had rearranged my insides with an icicle. My body understood what was going on before my brain could even begin to comprehend it. Damien? It was only as I spoke his name for the final time, my voice soft and broken, that, that I really looked at the boy in front of me. He was pale, yes, but he, he'd always been pale. His eyes and mouth were closed. He, he looked, for some reason, relaxed. Like he'd come to spend some time along the edge of the creek and think about life. His red shirt. No, his blue shirt was wrinkled far more than usual. It looked like someone had pulled it over his head for him and not taken a lot of care in doing so. And it was stained with so much... something. I didn't want to think about it. It didn't matter if I wanted to think about it or not. It was blood. It had to be blood. There was nothing else it could be. I took a step backwards away from Damien, away from Damien's body and from the duffel bag lying by his side. Seizing the opportunity to look at something other than my friend's corpse, my eyes locked onto the open bag. Damien's tools weren't what I saw poking out of the top. No bolt cutters, no coat hanger, no screwdrivers. Instead, the bag was filled with glistening scarlet viscera. All manner of organs and tissues that I couldn't identify stared back up at me. They'd been tossed in the bag in no particular order, a careless mess like the leftovers from a high school frog dissection. More than I had ever wanted anything, I wanted to scream. I couldn't. Nothing came out but quick, shallow breaths. I felt tears forming in the corner of my eyes as I backed further away, stumbling in the muck. It didn't take long for Melissa and my dads to find me. She'd gone to get them the second I started to wander off. The search was over. Welcome back, my darling deviants. Well, tell me, did you enjoy that twisted tale? Of course you did. I knew you had that air about you, that hunger for the horrific and the macabre. So, did we spook you? If not, then file a complaint with our complaint department detailing all accounts of non-spookiness you found in this video, and we'll get back to you in two to three millennia. Give or take a business eon or two. However, if you've enjoyed what you've just heard this evening, then make sure you leave a like on this video and annihilate that subscribe button. Such a small act of obedience is exactly what we need to put the food on the table around here. There's only so many days we can have refried kidney and toe jam hash before I'm absolutely sick of it. 
Spoiler alert, that ship sailed long ago. Now, I must bid you adieu. I have many things to take care of, and this outro is eating into my day off. Run along now. Have no fear, we'll be here every Tuesday and Thursday to bring you another terrible tale. Go forth, my ghastly gang, and stay spooky.